hey guys welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be sort of like a very conventional one i won't say it's that you know much of a big deal but it's something that is very very important that we're going to be talking about today so today we're going to be talking about business models now the reason why i'm saying it's important is because recently i've been doing some research and i realized that almost every big business out there has a specific business model that they run with right apple has a business model uber has a business model um, Spotify has a business model, Netflix has a business model. So what exactly is a business model? A business model is actually a document that you create um, together with your business plan and all. But then the main important thing about a business model is that it kind of breaks down how your business plans to make money. Like what system are you going to use to generate revenue? That's basically like the most important thing about a business model. And then there are different types that actually exist today. And then there are different types that have been created over time when, you know, business is just have an, a new idea of how they can make money and generate funds and then you have a new business model. So I'm going to just mention five, five of the ones that I feel like are very, very good and the ones that people don't necessarily know is an actual business model yet, like just, just like, oh, just the thing that people do. Okay, and I'm going to basically just share with you some tips at the end to know which one exactly should I choose and basically how should I like organize it. The first business model that I will talk about is subscription business model. Subscription model, which is actually very, very common. Like a lot of businesses, a lot of brands, especially online digital products, always use subscription model for their revenue generation. But then, like subscription model could be um could be a bit too general or, or like common. So like most people always add something else to it. Like instead of just using subscription model alone they also add another business model alongside the subscription model just means that your customer is paying on a monthly basis or on a yearly basis you know to be able to use your product or your service right um it can basically function for mainly digital products products like mobile apps websites web apps you know things like that those are where you would find subscription based models but then like there's some other people who do subscription models especially if they're having like a membership for their personal brand so like on on youtube you can also like pay on a monthly basis to access like exclusive content from youtubers those type of things can also you know fall under the subscription model the second one would be bundling model and this is actually most times used during sales um i've not really seen any business that actually uses bundling model like 100 percent um but then it's commonly used as you know maybe like a sales or a specific kind of you know events going on and then just kind of like bundle of products together to sell as one so basically what it means that you're selling two products as one for example eyeliner and mascara eyeliner and mascara are two different products i have one here this is mascara and eyeliner so it actually came this way yeah so this is an example of a bundling you know kind of thing you also have things like eyeshadow palette and eyeshadow brush you know things that go together you basically sell them together so most times people use um this kind of thing for like sales mega sales or things like that just to kind of get people to like jump on it because they feel like they're getting more items for a reasonable amount of you know money the next one will be freemium they call it freemium because basically you are giving access to free access to your customer for a period of time and then after which they will start to pay whether subscription or pay once or whatever payment system that you want to use so it's saying i'm registering on this platform i'll be able to use certain features and tools for a particular period of time and then after that period of time expires i either lose access to it or i pay to continue using this particular tool it kind of helps when the product is something that is new to the public and it's something that people are not used to seeing so they they like most times when things are like that people have doubts like give their money so they basically just give them free access for a period of time so they can experience what the product is like and then finally start to pay for it the next one is razor blade model and this one is i feel like it's the deadliest model because like it's quite <laughs> quite tricky right so basically what you're doing is just creating an ecosystem around your product a lot of mobile phone gadget companies usually use this strategy um, or this business model and apple is the biggest example of it for apple it's been working out and basically it just means that you create one product which is the iphone and then you create other products around that iphone that would mean that would make your customer have to buy those other resources to be able to use the iphone so like for example the iphone right the reason why they actually removed the um the slots for your earpiece is because they wanted you to buy the airports so basically you have the iphone and you have airports you have apple watch you have macbook you have your yeah, speaker you have basically all those other resources that help 
use that one iPhone. So that's basically the Razor Blade model. So basically creating one product and creating accessories around that product is actually one that could anger people. I don't know, because like personally speaking, um, I know someone that does not like Apple because of something and like it feels like they're just like stealing this money. But then it's a business model. I mean, they're making their money and it's all business. They're in a capitalist economy and just, that's just how it is. The last one I want to talk about is leasing. Everybody should know leasing at this point because leasing is just like, you know, the common thing in Nigeria is people want to lease land or lease a property. So what you're doing basically is you're giving someone access to whatever product is for a long period of time. They're basically need to pay like a huge amount for like maybe two years, three years, four years, that kind of thing, you know, that kind of thing. And it's mainly used for things like property, cars, um, houses, things like that, things that are really, really large and things that kind of move the economy. So yeah, so that's those are the five that I want to talk. I wanted to talk about, and I'm just going to just share some tips with you guys. So most business owners, small business owners in Nigeria, just start business, and they just they don't know all of these things. And I feel like it's important for you to know them because, except if what you're doing is just like trying to just put money on the table for yourself, just like get minor things. But then if you are actually running a business to scale then you should be able to um, incorporate these things at the foundation level. This is the reason why I'm always doing all these videos to you know, share with you guys so that you can basically um, have an idea of all these things. Now, if you're starting a business, right, like for example, I'm going to use my tech company as an example. Now, my tech company just started last year, June, June, July, right? And at that time when I, when I started, I chose the subscription model for my, for my tech company because it's a web app, mobile app, and it's a service platform, basically, financial service platform. So I basically chose a subscription model for it. So basically you pay on a monthly basis. And then I'm also incorporating premium into it. So you're getting free at the beginning when you first sign up and then later on you start to pay. And that was just all. That was just all that I had, like basically. And by the time I had meetings with people that are trying to come on board, negotiations and things like that, I just started to do more research and kind of figure out how I would want to go about this revenue stream process. And then the last call that I had with a potential um, investor mentioned that it's actually a very good idea. I added a third model, which the third model would be sort of like a one-time payment system, um, which is actually called a service service model. It's called a service model. I didn't mention it in the video, but it's called a service model where um, you basically render a service and the person pays after that's basically what it's for a consultation so basically customers on that uh, use the app can also pay consultation for any financial or financial advice they need or tax advice advice that has to do with law adding those three business models kind of makes it easier for the business to function so if one does not generate as much revenue as the other another one would all these business models actually work differently and they resonate differently with different customers like for someone like me i hardly I'm hardly consistent with subscription-based payments, right? For example, I use Netflix for like almost the whole of last year I was using Netflix and this year I haven't used Netflix for some reason. So like that's just how it is, especially if um someone is not getting constant income here. So the reason why I chose subscription model for my tech company is because the product is meant for a business that will definitely run all the time and they are bound to get income or revenue or profit every month. So I know that okay. They are going to actually have the money to pay every month whereas i cannot just create a personal fine let's say business finance and create a personal finance app for someone that does not get money on a monthly basis so let's say like a content creator or an entrepreneur salary right you're not getting money on a monthly basis i will not expect that you'll be able to pay for the app on a monthly basis so you have to understand your market and understand who you are targeting before you pick these models it has to make sense basically another tip that i want to say is that it's not really a tip though but it's just something to be to be aware of whatever business model that you choose is going to affect the kind of investors that you get some investors wouldn't want to invest in a business that has a certain type of business model for some reason i don't know venture capitalists and um, venture capitalist firms are kind of like that they are sometimes picky with people that they invest in so you just have to be aware of which business model you're choosing. It kind of helps if you choose more than one. I kind of incorporate more than one into your business, like the example I gave in my tech company, right? Um, so yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Guys, like I've been noticing on my analytics that my returning viewers are actually lower than my new viewers, which is good because I have more people that are new to my channel watching my videos. But it'd be nice if you actually subscribe and join the family. So um, I'm encouraging you to subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys. I'm almost at 1k. I'm almost at 600. That's like 400 more. So I really, really would love your support. 
subscribe to my channel like this video and also share to your friends guys share to people please even if it's something that you feel is not important for you share to someone else because it might be important to someone else so please thank you so much subscribe like share and i love you guys bye